faithwire.com. Hello and welcome to 4 and 3, a podcast breaking down four of the most important stories of the day and three things you need to know about them all from a Christian perspective. Today's Monday, May 3rd, 2021. I'm Dan Andros and coming up on the podcast today, school board election in Texas could be foreshadowing what Americans really think about critical race theory. Caitlyn Jenner is under fire from progressives for comments made on transgenders and sports. Former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo tells CBN News that the Biden administration is undoing the progress made under the Trump administration. We'll have the details on that. Plus, China's latest attempt to wipe out Christianity involves removing Bible apps. We'll have the details on those stories and more. Uh, Trey Goins Phillips is out today, so you're stuck with yours truly. And we will dive right on into story number one where parents in a Dallas area school district uh, decisively elected two candidates Saturday uh, in a race that was primarily uh, debated with critical race theory as the main topic of conversation. So the race for the two seats happened in the Carroll Independent School District, uh, which is located primarily in the North Dallas suburb of South Lake. And CRT uh, was the main issue at stake here. And this really all came about after some videos of students singing rap songs with the N-word in it uh, back in 2018 went viral. And so you had a lot of calls for them to rid the district of, quote, institutional racism. And so that led to the implementation of critical race theory and anti-racism training uh, for teachers and students. And so now Cameron Cam Bryan, a civil engineer and father of four, he captured one of the open seats with 68% of the vote. Hannah Smith, who's a prominent attorney and mother of four, won the other seat up for grabs with 69% of the vote. The two new school board members will take their seats on May 12th. And parents across the country are starting to organize at the local level uh, as progressives have increasingly taken control of municipal institutions around the country and try to implement this anti-racism training that really redefines America as a systematically racist country. Uh, So what's the left saying on this? Well, the losing candidate said that they're not surprised, given the demographics of the area, uh, alluding to it being affluent and mostly white. And they added that they're worried that that what this outcome will signal to the dozens of Carroll High students and recent graduates who came forward with stories about racist and anti-gay bullying over the last two years. NBC News spun the story as a bitterly divided election, but obviously it wasn't that divided given the overwhelming support for the anti-CRT candidates. So what's the right saying? Well, Dave Rubin ripped NBC's characterization of the story. Uh, He said that it's not bitterly divided when you have 70% of the vote going one way. Uh, And Hannah Smith, who was the one of the winning Uh, won one of the seats there, said the voters have come together in record-breaking numbers to restore unity by a landslide vote. They don't want racially divisive critical race theory taught to their children or forced on their teachers. Voters agreed with my positive vision of our community and its future. So why does it matter? Well, this is perhaps a harbinger of things to come on critical race theory, something that's making its way to many schools across the country. And the left has built it as anti-racism, which is seen by some as a linguistic ploy. It's akin to pro-choice, which in which uh, progressives and leftists try to tie morality to their political positions. So uh, CRT's also made its way into churches, and you've got several prominent evangelical pastors, such as Matt Chandler at the Village Church, embracing CRT and um, having conversations on white privilege and increasingly filtering things and seeing things through uh, a, a racial lens. So is this election an outlier or a sign of what the silent majority truly thinks? So time will tell, uh, but a lot of people are seeing this particular election as possibly a sign of things to come. So let's head into story number two, where Olympic gold medalist and California gubernatorial candidate Caitlyn Jenner, who's transgender, said over the weekend it would not be fair to allow biological males to compete on female sports teams. Uh, The athlete, who turned into a TV reality star later, told 
TMZ, uh, their thoughts on the subject when they were basically ambushed in a parking lot. And um, here's uh, here is how uh, that went down. Hi, Caitlin. So there's legislation in various states to ban biological boys who are trans from playing girl sports in school. What's your opinion on that? Uh, in back. In. This is a question of fairness. That's why I oppose biological boys who are trans competing in girl sports in school. It just isn't fair. And we have to protect girl sports in our but, but, but if someone transitions and now identifies as a girl, isn't it delegitimizing their identity to prevent Have a them? good day. And then they get in the car and uh, head on out of there. Um, so some of that audio was because uh, Jenner was getting into their car uh, as the reporter approached. So what's the left saying about this opinion uh, that Jenner expressed? Well, Jamila Jamil... Uh, said, imagine benefiting from the work activism sacrifice of trans people to be able to enjoy the platform of acceptance you currently have, only to use it to close the doors behind you. I hope her extremely influential kids, stepkids, speak out against this. Hashtag trans lives matter. Um, that was, uh, Caitlyn Jenner had tweeted this. And, uh, I didn't expect to get asked this on my Saturday morning coffee run, but I'm clear about where I stand. It's an issue of fairness we need to protect girls' sports in our schools. George Takai, who's an actor, former, and, and prominent on Twitter, said, Caitlyn Jenner is no friend of the LGBTQ community. Don't call her an activist. She's a menace. What's the right saying? Well, the right agreed in general with Jenner's assessment of the situation. You've got governors like Ron DeSantis, Christy Noem, who are moving to protect women's sports from an onslaught of biological men entering the arena with them. Why does it matter? Well, it matters because as Christians, if we believe the Bible, if we believe how God has designed us as men and women, then we ought to push back against policies that seek to essentially erase that distinction. The push to normalize transgenderism and accept it, and remember there's a difference between being respectful and using pronouns that someone prefers to use, there's a difference between that and celebrating it. Um, but that push will only seek to diminish the way God made us and intended us to be. We can respectfully engage one another while preserving our God-given genders, but the radical left is heading down a road that will all but eliminate what it means to be a man or a woman. It'll be just something you decide and really have no basis to it uh, whatsoever. So um, we'll be praying for this issue to come because this one's not going away and you're, this is another thing you're seeing. Uh, a lot of people put a lot of pressure uh, on, on others um, to accept it. Accept it or you're a bigot. And so that's an increasingly uh, divisive conversation that we're having. So we need wisdom as Christians and how do we handle that situation? How do we address people who we disagree with? Um, because it's only going to be getting more intense and amplified as uh, this goes on. So, all right, let's, let's head right on into story number three. CBN founder Pat Robertson talked with former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo in their studio in Virginia Beach about uh, the multiple threats that are facing uh, the country right now and his concerns that President Biden is reversing the progress made by the Trump administration. Peace through strength is what Pompeo recommended. And when an administration is viewed as weak, it creates real opportunities for these bad guys around the world. Pompeo played a key role, of course, in fostering the historic Abraham Accords, uh, the peace deals between Israel and Arabic nations. And when more and more are coming on board with that, uh, as it was getting momentum before Trump left office, um, and he questions if the new administration will continue to build on the progress uh, that the Trump administration made in the Middle East. Uh, and when asked uh, by Pat Robertson, who is the biggest threat that America faces right now? He said, aside from uh, the threat of within, the biggest threat that we face was a clear-cut nation. Far and away, the largest uh, foreign adversary is the Chinese Communist Party. Mm -hmm. They are uh, atheists. They are uh, adopting policies that look very much like the communism of the Soviet Union and the Marxist-Leninist mm -hmm. ideas. But with 1.4 billion people and a massive military and a significant economy as well. They present a 
to those of us who are Christian believers mm -hmm. and all Americans, they present the most existential threat to the United States that we have seen for did, decades did, did and decades. So there you have it from Mike Pompeo. Uh, they are clearly standing out as the biggest threat we face. And you can watch that full interview over at CBNnews.com. This particular interview, not a left-right interview per se, um, but why does it matter? It matters because Israel and the Middle East have seen relatively a calm period now uh, that could be coming undone as nations feel more emboldened by weak messaging that signals America will not be engaging as it previously had under the Trump administration. So let's be praying for peace and stability in the weeks, uh, in the months ahead uh, in the international front. Story number four, uh, speaking of China, we're going to zero in on the Chinese government and one of the reasons why they are so dangerous. Uh, Pompeo mentioned that they're an atheistic nation and the Chinese government is taking more steps to remove religious materials from the hands of Christians as the communist regime strives to eliminate the faith community entirely. Father Francis Liu from the Chinese Christian Fellowship of Righteousness advised that some uh, Christian WeChat accounts, including the Gospel League and Life Quarterly, are no longer offered online. Users receive the following message when they attempt to gain access. We received report that this account violates the Internet User Public Account Information Services Management provisions, and its account has been blocked and suspended. The CCP has gone as far as indoctrinating children by telling them that Christianity is a, quote, dark religion. As our Faithwire reported, uh, under the regime's regulations on religious affairs, school children have been trained for years to report any family members who espouse Christian views. And the Chinese government is escalating its efforts to groom young people in China to have the, quote, right ideas and thoughts that are anchored in atheism. In one case, a child found a Christian booklet in his home and became anxious because his teacher warned that, quote, Christianity is a, quote, evil cult. The children are given a textbook called Morality and Society, which talks more about this, quote, evil cult. Uh, so why does it matter? Well, again, this isn't really that much of a left-right issue here. It's just we need to be praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are in China. Uh, they have levels of persecution that we can only imagine and um, hopefully never come our way. But when you see things like that censorship there, and we just had a pastor, we're going to be reporting on this today over on faithwire.com. Uh, there was a street preacher, 71, arrested over in the UK for preaching, quote unquote, homophobic messages out in public. And he was just preaching from Genesis 1. Um, so you're going to see potentially a lot more of this sort of stuff come forward as hate speech gets redefined and community standards gets defined by secular leftists. So um, don't be surprised if things like this come, come maybe not as extreme as China, but if things in that vein come our way because you have people who are hostile to the Christian religion who are pushing these agendas right now. So that is all we have uh, for this Monday. As always, um, go ahead and follow the 4 and 3 podcast over on our Faithwire YouTube uh, channel. We'll be adding this uh, to iTunes and all your favorite podcast platforms uh, very, very soon. Uh, and we'll be doing this live as well on YouTube uh, in the near future. Uh, in addition to the podcast. Uh, so be looking forward to all of that. We'll be back here tomorrow with more of the same. As always, head over to cbnnews.com and faithwire.com for more news from a Christian perspective. God bless you. Have a great day.